My answer is two words. Right now. Welcome back to the Monster Matchup, the show where you get to know your foe from head to toe. We're tuning back into the Elder Dragon Jam, and today's subject is the mythical horned one, the walking lightning rod, the beer mascot, Kieran. You like getting zapped? Well, then this is just the thing for you. Kieran is a test of timing, telegraphing, and willpower to not go insane. This fight is rather different from others so far. The spontaneity of its powers and mobility can lock down a hunter and make it feel like Kieran's untouchable. Bolts and zaps galore, and next thing you know, you're being hauled back to camp. Unless Jabe's there with Metagel. It may seem daunting at first, but is this legacy monster truly as bad as it seems? The answer may shock you. Ha <laughs> ha Classic Gabeisms. Let's get our thunderproof mantle raincoats, prep those null berries, and get ready to ride the lightning. As Jabe and I check this out, ain't that right, buddy? No promises. Three, two, one, begin! Kirin is an Elder Dragon located in the Coral Highlands and Guiding Lands. There's an air of majestic peacefulness to this beast. I feel kind of bad disturbing the peace here. So off the bat, mobility is going to be the name of the game for Thunder Pony. Staying still is generally going to up your chances of forcing a fast travel right back to camp via cart, and Kirin will beat a hunter into submission for getting caught lacking. But the most dangerous part about Kirin is actually not its physical attacks, but the ability to manipulate lightning to strike down hunters. Thunder Pony's fighting capabilities include but are not limited to a little nudge nudge sweeping the area cavalry charge jumping around stay still donkey kick thunderstruck both near and far random thunderstruck while it struts or thunder strut if you will lines of pain uber charge alternating surrounding zaps and rewards decrease so yeah, between Kieran moving around and the zoning potential of its abilities, you're probably going to be on your toes. Especially in the daytime, it can be hard to see the blue spots where lightning is going to strike if you're not paying enough attention. An uber-charged Kieran is all the more challenging, with an Elder Dragon aura and buffed abilities, like the hopscotch and cavalry attack leaving lightning bolts in its wake, and multiple lines of pain instead of, like, one. And those alternating bolts that go off around Kieran pretty much double. Additionally, at least in Master rank, while the line attack is queued up on the ground, the monster is free to attack with other stuff, like a big lightning strike or more lines. Things that Kieran can afflict you with. Thunder Blight, which will eventually lead to stun, and there's also paralysis in the mix. I love it. <laughs> if you don't move, you're cruising for a death. Also, Uber-Charged Kirin can make attacks bounce off the body unless they have white sharpness. Or if you're based and have something that ignores attack deflections. But we'll get back to this later, very important note about this later. So what, Gabe? Am I supposed to just sit and get dunked on? How am I gonna hit the monster? Can I do anything to not get the Grease Lightning? So yes, actually, all you gotta do here is, uh, not get hit. <laughs> Let's look at what we can do to make the most out of My Little Pony's weaknesses. Please, I beg you, just use the mantle for the corresponding element, it's gonna be a big help. The more you can avoid avoid Thunder Blight, the better. Use Null Berries if needed when afflicted, build against Thunder, or even stuns if you want and you're really having trouble. Paralysis is there too, so you could factor some building around that if you see fit. The beauty of builds is that you can adjust based on what route the struggle bus is taking you. Don't try to use Flash Pods, it's just gonna give you a look of disapproval for trying. Although Robot Unicorn Attack doesn't like to stay still, it tends to do so after particular attacks, and that's gonna be your window of opportunity to strike. After a big lightning strike, or a series of strikes. The big dumb head will be yours for the taking. Utilizing hit and run tactics will be very beneficial here. Anything can be used, really. Something like a greatsword would actually fit very nicely, but use whatever you're comfortable with in those small windows. If you're having trouble with setup, maybe see if another weapon fits the mold better. Read the monster. The different head motions, that strut, the location of blue spots for lightning, all of it can technically be read to anticipate what it's gonna do. My foot fell asleep. Okay. Shoot, to an extent, sounds can too. Like there's a familiar sound when he's about to do the donkey kick, or how the lines will strike in the same order that they appear. In order to tell what kind of time frame you have, it'll be important to identify what's about to be thrown your way. And while it's true the lightning is the biggest concern, those physical attacks can still stun you or knock you over and leave you susceptible to getting zapped. Look for those cues, like this little head nod before Kieran puts lightning in front of it, or this few second buildup of Kieran becoming uber charged. 
You go in, you smacky smack, you get out. Rinse, repeat, and you're gonna wear that thing down faster than you can say, please let me get up, dude, oh my god. Weak points for the love of everything. Hit the head. Kieran is a pretty small monster. It's only got two parts that you can mount instead of the regular three. The head is going to be the point to focus on, which should be considered when positioning yourself in the fight. You don't really need to be by its butt for, like, anything. But I understand it's not exactly staying put for us here. But hey, that's where it's gotta go down, baby to square up. Break that horn. Channel your inner monk. Also, the aforementioned weapon bouncing when uber-charged. You can still hit the head fine, even when bouncing off the body. All the more reason, kids. All the more reason. Now, how about those element weaknesses? Now is actually one of the times where you get to bring the spice, which is great. Haha. <laughs> Funny. Water and ice are gonna be sufficient damage types. Dragon damage is marked with one star. And yeah, there's always the chance for Elder Seal if you're trying to snuff out the aura, but if you dish out enough damage anyway, you might not need to worry about that, right? If you're in a hunting party, maybe you can get the best of both worlds. Have one do one and one do another. But I mainly take the spicy route here, to be honest. Ailment weaknesses. You're not gonna proc paralysis. Ah, who is speaking of which? Ah, oh, my whole leg just fell asleep. Okay. That's not good, that's bad. But you do have a chance at stunning, which works perfectly perfect since the head is the main point of contact. You might want to hold off on poison, but sleep and blast are both viable options. You can blow up the pointy end right off of its head, or you can make it take a nap. So then you can set up the great forever nap. When it's all said and done, I believe in you guys. Kieran's battle is pretty straightforward. It's gonna be big on reading the monster. The hard part is getting through its onslaught, then once you get a hold of it, the tides turn. Just take a moment, Breathe, look closely at what it's doing, and eventually, you're gonna read this thing like a book, baby. Timing and waiting for that slippery little bastard to stay still. If you stay mobile, stay vigilant, and stay strapped, you can send that thunder down under. Final verdict? Next time, the floor is lava.